Hey there, guys! This is Pharaoh 2091 and welcome to... not really a different video, but kinda different video for my channel. This is a full guide to... Please don't touch anything! A quirky little game that I recently picked up and had my eye on for quite a while, but it recently went on sale. Basically, you're just like an employee in front of this weird machine. The game, yeah, it says please don't touch anything, but you know you're freaking tempted to push and do whatever stuff, but it's like, I don't know what to do. So, I'm labeling this video as a guide and not technically a let's play because I showcasing, I will be showcasing all 25 different endings to this game and explaining how to get each one. Now for a let's play, I typically kind of just sit down, relax, don't really, it's usually blind and just kind of mess around and like fumble around everywhere. Here I know exactly what I'm doing, this is actually a post commentary as well, and as the name suggests, it's a guide to show people who are struggling with the game how to get all the endings that they're missing, and it will be in sequential order. So each, like, I'll first, I'll get fir first, get a first ending, I'll get a second ending next, so on and so forth. I won't be, I won't be jumping around everywhere. So, for a first ending, you notice I'm not really doing anything, and that's the point. You want to sit, just not, not do anything, for a full minute, and that is simply that. <laughs> and anytime you want to go ahead and end, or reset, or do another thing, just click that restart button, and then we can go all over again. Simple as that. For the second ending, all that you're gonna want to do is keep smashing that button. You want to hit it 20 times. You notice that after a number of times we push the red button, different things happen. We'll get into these items later on. All you want to do right now, push it 20 times, you can't do anything else. The third ending is very simplistic. We're going to start, of course, start off by pushing that button, but now we have that switch we haven't even touched. We flip it, can't do anything else, let's push the button again, there's a countdown, and we blew it up. Oh my god, we are terrible human beings. The fourth ending is where things get a little bit more involved. We'll push the button a few times to bring up the Roman numeral panels you see right here. And if you look at the instruction panel on the top left, you notice that there's looks like it looks like a ladder on the right. However, if you kind of like tilt your head to the right, you'll notice that's extra Roman numerals. And we put in the code one three two two three one. Memorize that thing because we're going to be using it numerous times. We have this panel in this, in this lever. We're just working on a lever right now. Push it to the left. We got another number panel. Let's have a wonder what do I do. Focus on the equation on top left. Don't worry, you don't have to solve it. But let's just focus on numbers on the top. Eight, three, six, seven. We're going to be using that quite a bit as well. We do that. We have a grid and another numbered panel show up. But let's go ahead and just focus on the grid for right now. You notice how we have, well, the evil number 666, the number of the beast, and that pentagram. Now, what you actually want to try doing, so what I mess up here, is drawing that pentagram on the grid. Now, I have, like, the that, those few parts right, correct right there. Like, was I, what I was messing up on the bottom there was I was a little too close. So you actually want to be on the second row, and the second to last row. That's where you want to put the last two dots. So I don't know why I kept messing that up or why I didn't realize that sooner, but there you go. Now you can just creep a little image, you feel a little uneasy, and we go on to the next ending. This is the ending where we actually get to use an, an item that we have at our disposal. So you want to push that button 15 times to get the hammer to appear on the top left. Don't worry about that screwdriver, we'll be using it soon enough. And you know what a hammer is used for besides building things? Smashing things! Like a monitor! And, ooh, a little question block. Of course I'm gonna push it, but what's gonna happen? Well... The Illuminati's watching you. And the game crashes on you. However, that was really quick. Here's a little still image there. You see those symbols on each corner? Memorize those, so you're gonna be needing it later on. But going on directly to the sixth ending now, put in Roman numerals again, and we're gonna push that to the left, 
and instead of using the, the 8367, we'll focus on the bottom there, the 8232. Don't worry about solving it, just put those numbers in. Let's actually push the go to the left, and just like the movie Back to the Future, well, we're going to the past. Except this is like really in the past. Oh my god. But now that we went to the past, why else did we go to the future? So go ahead and push that right button, and you're gonna be going to the future. Looks pretty grim, too. In actuality, those are actually two different endings. You can see from the image out there, it's pretty cool. You're gonna see a little references to like a, a bunch of different stuff throughout this game. It's gonna be fun. This is the ending where we actually get to use our screwdriver now. It's like, finally! Because you notice like that thing in the top right, that panel, it's like, come on, it has screws, it's begging to be unscrewed. That's exactly what we're gonna be doing. And as you can see, well, we got colored panels, that's what I'm supposed to do with this. If you go in your instructions up there, you notice the word grab? It's misspelled right there. G-R-B-B. -B. How about green, red, blue, blue? It's a little while to figure out, but look at that. Another ending. Huh, everything got inverted. Kind of cool. Now for the majority of the endings coming up here, we're kind of going to be following the same thing here, where we're going to put in Roman numerals, it's always going to be the same code, 132231, and a lot of times we're going to be pushing it to the left, and we're always going to be, almost be always using this code, 8367. I don't think we're going to be using 8232 anymore. Let's actually focus on the bottom right panel now. And you look at the top left, it's out of order. 1, 2, 4, 3. It's like, is it that simple? In actuality, yeah it is. At least for this time around. Oh my god, a black hole. For this ending, we're actually doing something a little bit different with that lever. You notice how we kept pushing it to the left? How about this time we want to be a little bit rebellious? Let's go ahead and push it to the right! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Well, yeah. There you go. You notice we have two buttons, zero and one, and... That thing in the bottom, we'll mess with it later. Go back to the instruction panel, and we see the word work, and we see, like, dots. Blue and red ones. Well, let's just go ahead and assume that the blue ones are zero, and the red ones are one. So, we're gonna get zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one. And in doing so, not only are we gonna get a... cool little robot attacking the buildings, or attacking the city, we also get a cool little reference to Futurama. I love you, Bender! Now, before we actually get going with this new ending, you'll notice on the bottom right, a new thing has appeared. Don't worry about that for right now, we'll get to it soon enough. But for right now, we're actually going to be focusing on another piece of the machine that we haven't touched yet, and it's those green buttons to the left there. If you go in your instructions on the top left, you'll notice that there's arrows pointing to the top left, the top right, top right, top left. Push those buttons in that order, and it's as simple as that. And not only are we going to get UFOs attacking the city, but we get a nice little reference to Space Invaders. Now this ending is a little bit more involved, but first of all, we're going to be following the instructions we've been using throughout the so far, and that's putting in the Roman numerals, pushing that lever to the left, putting in the sequence of 8367, and that's, this is where something new comes into play. We're going to be focusing on the bottom right panel again, but if you actually take a look at the instructions, you see like all those equal signs in the like 1 and 2? Well, this is called the look and say method. You see that we have... 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, two, and 2-1s. Two that means we actually put in 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. It's like we actually have 1 number 1, 1 number 2, and 2 number 1s. And we got this little thing. And if you gotta mess around with it, it almost sounds like the music in the background. Well, actually, it does. And we want to repeat that. It's as simple as doing right, right, middle, left, 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 middle, right. Yeah, that one took a little while for me to figure out because I'm not so great when it comes to rhythm and music, but enjoyable nonetheless. Now for this ending, I hope you guys know math. Now don't worry, it's not too bad. I'm sure many of you guys know this. And you'll know what I mean once we get to it. But to get to it first, let's go ahead and do like our normal set of instructions, and right here, you want to stop and go ahead and get that screwdriver out. Now, do you see those wires right underneath that monitor? Go ahead and clip those. 
We gave like a new little thing opening up right here in the bottom left, and we're gonna be inputting numbers using the green panel numbers. Now you see, don't do it. I've been avoiding it, and we actually keep pressing press it four times to get a name here: Pisano Leonardo. If you actually look up on Google, you'll find out that it's not other than Fibonacci. You guys remember the Fibonacci sequence? Basically, where each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So, if you know what the Fibonacci sequence is, it basically starts off 0, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus, you know, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. That is the Fibonacci sequence, and, uh, hopefully you guys knew that, and uh, Google helps, it really does. I hope you guys have your clicking fingers ready, because you're going to be using it quite a bit for this ending. Put in the Roman numerals. And this time, when it comes to a green panel, if you look at the instructions again, yeah, it said top left, right, right, left, but you see in the bottom it says the word correct. You flip it, and that means that's time to push bottom right, bottom left, bottom left, bottom right. And we get two little things here. Don't worry about the top right there, D4. We want to be messing with this. It says 276, and we keep pushing that gray button, and it's like, oh my god. Yeah! You're gonna want to keep pushing that until you get to 276. I'll sc go ahead and skip this for you guys. I really hope your fingers aren't killing you by now. Once you get 276, push that red button, and vegetation takes over. And like I said, I really hope your clicking finger doesn't hurt because, well, there's something later on that you're probably not gonna like. Do you guys like minigames? I adore them. And this game generously gives us one. And to access it, we just gotta keep hitting that restart button until we get City Boom. And for this little ending, we're gonna be playing a little game where we are an airplane dropping bombs on a city. Yeah, I know it doesn't sound really good, but it's a game. Now, as you can see, every single time that your plane goes off the screen, it gets lower and lower. So what you have to worry about is you want to take care of the buildings that are tall enough, because you could easily hit them and have to restart the uh, game again. If you do mess up, just keep, keep clicking that restart button until you get City Boom again. Easy as that. Now, what also is interesting about this... Uh, if you don't miss any of your bombs, like if it doesn't hit the ground and it hits all the buildings, you actually get an Achievement Club Red Baron. This was the first time I actually did it, by the way, so I was like, oh, sweet. Now, you see those words a little bit messed up? You see that we have the letters Y, R, B, and B. Remember that for something later. Now, we're not entirely done when it comes to mini games in this in this game just yet. Go ahead and get out that hammer. And instead of actually well hitting the monitor, let's hit that button. And it's like, oh god, what the hell's going on? You notice that now our cursor is the hammer. Speaking of minigames, do you guys like whack-a-mole? Because this basically what's gonna be happening here. You wanna attack that disturbing little thing in the middle once you get rid of all those bloody sacks. And just to let you guys know, this is timed. You see that blood trail in the middle there? If it hits restart, that's that. So each sack takes three hits. And once you're done with that, kill the thing, and you succeed. It's as easy as that. It is a little bit of a time crunch, but it shouldn't be too bad if you just pay attention and well, like I said, that's that. You get this weird image. Honestly, I don't think you need this for any of the other endings. It's just there to mess with your head. Now, this ending can be a doozy if you really don't know what to do. First off, get out that screwdriver and remove the instruction panel on the top left. Now, you'll notice like, it's like, oh my god, I have three clocks, it's like, what's going on? Some of them are green, some aren't. Well, the whole premise is we actually want to get all three of them to green. And you'll notice that, well, to do so, you basically have to get your system time to midnight. 
So either you can wait till midnight to play the game, or you can do what I did and just manipulate the systems on my computer to get to midnight. And once that happens, you actually get another little piece of the puzzle to get the ending, and it's this printed thing right here. You can say you have a couple of blue dots and red dots. Now from the bottom top, you want to put in as many red dots that you have. So I, and it's always different every time you input this. It's always going to be a different combination. It's not necessarily going to be mine. And once you do so, apparently the Death Star decided to say hi to us and blow up the city. Usually they blow up planets, but no, just the city. Remember how I said how I hope your clicking fingers weren't hurting yet? Yeah, this is where you're really going to be using it. So once again, bottom right, bottom left, bottom left, bottom right. And you notice that number six is a little odd. Yeah, I think you guys know where I'm going with this. So quickly enough, I'm just going to go ahead and just showcase how even the middle one is also kind of tainted red with the number six. So I think you all know exactly what I have to do now. And this is where I hope your clicking finger doesn't hurt. I'll be back once I get to that little magical number. A few minutes later, and we're finally here at 666. Go ahead and push that red button. Wait, we're not done yet! Do you guys remember those four symbols of the Illuminati ending? Yeah, this is where it comes into play. Now what you want is you want to keep those four symbols lit up, not, per not push them down. And the ones we want to keep are the Bloodshot Eye, the Arrow, not the Arrow, but the Hourglass, the Key, and the Two Waves. And once you do so, you get, you get your ending. And for all that work, can you get dancing and smiling buildings? Hooray! To really understand how to get this ending, it's really beneficial I've done all the previous endings so far. First off, go ahead and put in the Roman numeral code. Put in the correct green button sequence. So we have that D4. Keep that in mind for something we're going to do later on. Go ahead and put in our regular code of 8367. And let's also get out that screwdriver and remove that instruction panel because there's something I didn't mention yet. And that's that panel's numbers that we have, like the D1, D7, and all that. Now, you don't want to grade how alphabetically it goes left to right and numerically it goes up and down. That's exactly what we're going to be doing here. It's a grid. So, first off, just to tell you, B and 4 go together. So, it'll be the second column, fourth row. And we kind of follow the same pattern for D1, D4. That's how we unveiled it. And we also have D7. And you notice how it's kind of like a pattern already? It's almost like shaping like a cross or a diamond. So, now we're going to go to F4, and we get a diamond. It's like, oh, pretty cool. But we're not done yet. Now we're actually going to be focusing on the green set of numbers again. You know, now you see the panel on the left that says don't do it. We have 4020. Yeah, that was a little cryptic. But in doing so, we get this weird little thing. It's like, okay, get off that screwdriver. And do you remember those letters that we got at the city bomb ending? It was yellow, red, blue, blue, or YRBB. And we got that little weird thing. Can't do anything with it yet, but we actually, now that we have the diamond, then we push it, then we get the ending. I kind of like the music here. So yeah, that's probably one of the first endings that it's really involved that requires you to have done the previous endings to kind of get the hints needed to figure this one out. Here's an ending that you guys would probably love if you guys play another memorable indie game, which I have but haven't actually played yet. We want to go ahead and get the second ending, which is like pushing a button 20 times, reset, and we get a waiting input. I believe this happens after you get like five endings. After you push the button, more buttons come out. And you push the new ones, and even more buttons come out. 
And that is the premise of the entire, well, of this ending. You want to keep pushing the new buttons that keep coming out. Now, if you have good memory, uh, memory then you can probably do this easily. But for me, it's like, ah, oh, crap. I'm not really sure what I clicked and what I didn't click. So sometimes you can just go ahead and just push them all until you get the correct inputs. There's no penalty for doing so besides wasting time. And we already got that ending. <laughs> Easy as that. That's uh, a Stanley Parable uh, reference there, which I never played, but I do have. I don't know why why that's so. But are you guys ready for another indie game reference? Yeah. Papers, please! I love this game. Recently played it, too. Now, we saw that item for a long time, but this is where we're actually going to be using it now. Now, to get the ending, we actually want to deny him, but for the hell of it, you know, let's see what happens when we actually try admitting him. Uh, nothing happens. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and now deny the, uh, Guy Fo- what's his name? Is it Guy Fox? Something, I, I don't think I'm saying it right, but if you guys seen V for Vendetta, well, there's that as well. But, uh, there you go. I just love that I have the music and everything. It's so freaking awesome. This ending can probably be easy to miss if you haven't really been paying attention. Every single time I press the red button, there's always that little arrow. Now, you don't click on it, but if you keep clicking in that direction, you're gonna keep getting new arrows, and basically you just keep following the arrow until you get to a uh, another piece of the puzzle. I I just I never mentioned it because like I mean I think I've noticed it when I first was first playing. I'm like why the hell is there an arrow there and then it goes away after you push the button a second time or so. But you keep doing this until eventually you get this grid. But it's kind of like a puzzle. And I'll do this. Here's the correct way. Top right. Down there. Top left. Boom. 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 I'm not sure what the, what the name of that type of puzzle is, but it's like you push in a button and like other lights up and it's kind of like in a cross section. I always seen the Professor Layton series. But that's the proper way to do it in, in six steps. Now, this ending, let's just say, kind of revolves around the theme of space. And to figure out how to do a lot of this stuff, it was a little weird. Uh, either you just had to have general knowledge of it, or possibly just look it up. I'm not sure. I had to look it up because I was a little stumped. I was like, I'm not sure exactly what I have to do here. But that little lamp, now they're actually using it, you notice that like, there's hidden write writings everywhere. And it's pretty cool. Uh, granted, I don't think I look at every little thing, because there's actually like one piece that we actually want to pay attention to uh, for the time being. And there's a little Easter egg right there. Um, to the left of the screwed panel, you notice that they, we have numbers here, like 0, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1. Basically, that means the position of the number is going to be there. So 0 is going to be in the second, third position, 1 is going to be in the fourth position, and 2 is going to be in the first position. Now, that was kind of like an extra step just to use that lamp. Um, obviously you need to do that if you didn't know what the, what the code would be. So 2001, I don't think it's supposed to be a reference to 2001 in Space Labs here, maybe it is, but regardless, put in 2001, and we get this dialer. Now you can mess around with it, and it's like, what, am I, what the hell am I supposed to spell out? And you'll notice that the only thing you can spell out is the word Pluto. And it makes sense if we're going with the whole space planet theme. We can get Pluto, push that button, we get a key. But we're not done yet, because we're just like, where the hell am I supposed to put the key? Get the screwdriver out, unscrew that panel. You guys know how Mars is kind of labeled as a red planet? We'll just put it in all red. And now we have a keyhole to put the key in. And once you do that, we launch into space. So yeah, this ending was to me, odd. I had to look things up because I was like, I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure out we had to use Pluto and get that key and all that, but it's there. Hopefully I help you guys out with that one. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. The last two endings. 
let's get to it. First off, we want to get that lamp that we used in the last ending because it's going to be very beneficial for this ending as well. And Google will probably help you too because I'm not sure how many of you know Morse code off the top of your head. Now you see that the word dot is lit up, so that means we need to know the Morse code for the word dot, which is dash dot dot dash 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 dash. We don't have dashes and dots, but we do have ones and zeros. Substitute one for dash and zero for dot, and you get the 24th ending. It's like, okay, but what about the last ending? What do we do? How do we activate it? Well, it's as simple as hitting that restart button. Hey man, man, I need to take a bathroom break. Stay here for a moment. Wait, what is the panel for? Ah, oh, don't bother, it's just a coffee machine. Why is it so strange? I don't know, it just appeared here one day. Sometimes it just shows ads on the screen. You can order coffee while I'm gone, there's a red button. But don't take too long. And if you push that red button, what happens? Do we blow up the city? Nah, we get some coffee and we get the credits. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the full guide to get to get every single ending. So please don't touch anything. Granted, I touched everything, but that's how you're, you're going to be able to get all 25 endings. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this might not have been different from any other Let's Play that I do, but, um... I just wanted to label this one as a guide because I just simply wanted to showcase to anybody who's having trouble how to achieve nearly everything in this game. Granted, I didn't get, I wasn't going for the achievements, but I just wanted to help anyone who was stuck getting a certain ending. That's why I got them all in sequential order. And they'll be in timestamps in the description below if you guys need to look for a specific ending. So, uh, that was that for today's video, and, uh, well, hopefully I'll get back into making other LPs, well, in the future. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys for whatever the hell I plan to do next. I love you all, and I'll see you guys later.